Takasan in Tokyo let me know、uh, the information about、uh, Tall White. Uh, Tall White is a、uh, sort of an alien, extraterrestrial alien, and、uh, this is a report about it. 皆さん、こんにちは。東京のタカさんからトール・ワイトに関する情報が届きましたので、今日はそれを紹介いたします。トール・ワイト、まあ、肌がですね、チョークのように白くて背が高い、まあ、エイリアンの子というわけですけども、トール・ワイトがどういう人物あエイリアンであるかは、次のビデオをまずご覧ください。Hello, this is Hiroshi Hayashi, Hamama City, Japan. When Mr. Hon Paul Heller, the former Minister of Defense Force of Canada,、uh, stated about a man whose name was、uh, Tall White, it、uh, reminds me of a man in a picture. This is a story about it in Japanese. Canada's、uh, then Kogo Dai Jin, Tall White, Nopon Hagujin, Tokyo, 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 私はこの絵を思い出しました。この絵の中に描かれているこの人こそそのトール・ワイトではないかなと思,う思ったのであります。超等人間、頭長く,長くて手が長くて、そしてあの手が、手というか腕が長くてですね、手が非常に小さいですね。で、顔が白いと。まあ、あのそれでまあこの絵にもう一回こう着目してみたわけです。で、今日のビデオはその物語ですけども、あのその前にあの、あいわゆる、本、ポール・ヘイリアさんのですね、えー、皆さんに証言を聞いていただき、またその後に、もう一度、この海岸の謎についての、ついて迫ってみたいと思います。えー、どうか、お楽しみください。Hello, former Prime Minister of Defense Force of Canada, Mr. h o n Paul h a l e r stated at the Congress that UFOs are as, as real as airplanes flying over the head. This is a very shocking news, and also he said, at least two of them are probably working with US government. I believe other species that I learned about were long ago called tall white.、Uh, this is a story about it. Thank you. To speak to a symposium at the University of Toronto, and、uh, I said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. On Earth at this present time, and、um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government. I, the seventh, the other species that I learned about、uh, not too long ago was called the tall whites. To become spiritual beings and practice the one tenet that the world's major religions have in common, and that is the golden rule. Uh, この続きはですね、このビデオの最後にあのつけておきますので、また興味のある方はご覧ください。えーでは、あの、チャールズ・ホールさんという方のですね、まあ、あの、証言と言いますか、それをもとにトール・ワイトのことをこれから皆さんにお話したいと思います。まあ、これがそのレポートなんですけども、まあ、大変ショッキングと言いますか、具体的と言いますか、そういうレポートなんですね。で、まあ、トール、チャールズ・ホールさんという方はどういう方かというとですね、まあ、あの、えー、と先ほども言いましたポールあー・ヘリアさんがですね国防大臣があの議会でも名前を出した方なんですけどもあアメリカの空軍にですね、えー、ずっと働いてましてそれで、he, uh, 20 years after his discharge from the Air Force he began writing down his experiences and、uh, after another 20 years published them と、まあ、どういう方かというと、まあ、彼はですね20、えー、彼がですね、20年あの空軍で働いた後,後,後にですね、えー、彼はあの、まあ、かかあ解,任解任されてその後彼は本を書き始めると自分があのもう20年後にそれからねさらに退職してから20年後に本を書き始めたと、まあ、その時の経験があの経験といいますか証言がこの,あ元この今,日今回のレポートの元になっているわけでありますでこのトール・ワイトに関してはですねあの興味深いところだけをあのちょっと読んでみますとですね
。まあ、これは、ね、ネリスエアフォースというところは、まあ、その、トールワイト、彼がトールワイトを、その、まあ、目撃し、また、あの、彼らの、え、あの、クラフトですね。あの、大きさがですね、あの、最初の冒頭に示しましたクラフトなんですけども、いう楕円形のクラフト,クラフトなんですけども、小さいのと小型と大型とありましてですね、小型の方はバスか、まあ、バンぐらいの大きさだと。で、大きい方はですね、500フィートかける300フィート、約、まあ、152メートルかける91メートルの大きさがあると。で、トールワイトはあるまあ、星座から来てるんだっていうのことが書いてあります。その部分を今、これから、えー、読みますので、あの、読みますというか、興味が、たずっと長27ページにわたるね、長いレポートなもんですから、あのー、ずっと、オリジン、オリジンズ・オブ・ザ・トール・ワイト、トール・ワイトの起源ということで,です、ね、どこから来たかですけども、When asked where they came from, they would usually evade the question by reminding him that he would not recognize the name of the place if he had heard them speak it. あの、その前にちょっと言っておきますが、トールワイトっていう人はですね、あの、えっと、話し方がですね、人間のような言葉を使うわけじゃないんですね。あの、うなり声のような声を上げたり、というようなことが、あの、えー、書いてありました。あまあ、あのその前のチャールズ・ジェームズ・ホールさんはどういう方かというと、エアマン・フェイスクラス、第9の空軍、空軍が、の、へ、空軍、フェイスクラス、ファーストクラスチャールズだって書いてありますが、まあ、さ、第、第一級の、まあ、あの、ってことを書いてありますね。with the city restricted ranges. まあ、あの、詳しくは、あの、先ほど紹介しましたウェブサイトで見ていただきたいんですけども、ちょっとごめんなさいね。えー、最初にマーク、マークしておけばよかったんですけども、あの、トール、トールワイト。ちょっと順序逆になりますけども、あのテクノロジーに関してですね、技術、トールワイトが持っているテクノロジーはどんなものかというとですね、The Tall White obviously possesses hard advanced technology と、えー。トールワイトは明らかに、えー、高度な、えー、技術を持っていると。Hall confined his、uh, descriptions of their technology or brief discussions of their deep spacecraft.、まああの新宇宙。まあ、あの、宇宙って言ってもね、あの、低い宇宙と、まあ、と遠いディープスペースとあるわけですけども、まあ、2種類の、まあ、クラフトを持ってると。で、小さいのは先ほど言いましたように、まあ、あの、サイズはバスか RV ぐらいの大きさだと。大きいのは500フィートから300フィートですから、高さが70フィートありますからね。まあ、そういったもので、まあ、小さいのでも月ぐらいは平気,平気で行き来できるんだっていうようなことが書いてありますね。で、この、えー、離陸着陸の時には、あの、このレポートの中で、あの、非常にこう、微妙な、あの、離陸の仕方をしてるわけですね。月と太陽が、こう、うまい位置に来た時に、まあ、離陸して飛んでいくんだというようなことを、あの、このレポートの中で書いています。ええー、と、ごめんなさいね、トールワイド、トールワイド、あれオリジンとか、あの、キャラスティックスティックアブザ、トールワイド。ワイト ET、白い、あの、ET と書いてあります。えー、ホール has described these beings as tall, ranging upward、uh, of six to seven feet in height,、uh, and quite thin and、uh, frail. The skin color is chalk white. They are physically different from us in several noticeable ways. あ、ここですね。えー、と、まあ、ホール、ホールが、ホール氏が言うにはですね、えー、身長がですね、6から7フィートあると。まあ、180から210センチ。この高さというのはですね、まあ、あの、別のところで述べましたけども、ギリシャ彫刻の大きさと同じなんですね。あの、だいたい240センチ前後なんですよね。ギリシャ彫刻というのはだいたい平均して。ですから、あの、ギリシャ彫刻は、その、いわゆるエイリアンたちがですね、人間が、人間を掘ったのではなくて、自分たちの姿、等身大の自分たちの姿を掘った、掘った。まあ、もちろん 3D 加工機で掘ったわけですけども、あの、3D フォトグラフ、写真技術を使って掘ったわけですけども、その高さとも一致するわけで,す、ね、でまあ特にいくつかの点で違うと、えー、最も違うところは彼らはヒューマノイドであるといわゆる人造人間であるということですね、えー、人造人間だということなんですね面白いですねで Their life span is about 10 times ours 彼らの、えー、人生の長さというのはですね我々の 10, 10倍はあると
is they do not age as we do. 彼らは私たちには年を取らないと。いわゆる年の取り方が違うというんですね。But after around 400 earth years, 地球年で400年でですね、they earn and they go second stage growth. 彼らは400年経つと2番目の発育、成長発育の段階に入るんだと。Eventually reaching around 9 feet in height. それからその結果として9フィート、約180センチ。違いますね。30かける3区270センチですから、2メートル70センチの身長になるというわけです。They die or uh, uh, organ failures at the early approximately, approximately 800 years. およそ800年、800歳で人生が、まあ、あのいわゆる機能がね、あの機,能的機,能機能的な死を迎えると。まあ、そ,そこで、according to the exobiologist,、uh, extraterrestrials are not supposed to resemble us. と。あの、生物学者によれば、我々の、まあ、異星人というのはですね、私たちとは似ていないと。as they should have developed independently by natural selection with、uh, randomness and a varying environment leading to innumerable、uh, genetic past. On the other hand, some scientists、uh, speculate that there will be a、uh, resemblance due to a u- universal utility of various、uh, aspects of human form. と、まあ、人間とは違うということを言っているんですね。あの、ここで注意したいのはですね、あの、ちょっと私今気がついたんですけども、400年ごとにこの400年で一つの区切りをつけて別の発育をするっていうんですけども、この脳細胞っていうのはですね、もう死滅する一方なんで、あの、ある一定のキャパシティを超えると、まあ、脳の中ははっきり言えば空っぽになるんですよね。まあ、そうすることによって過去の人格、性格、性質を人間は保つことができるわけですけども、あの、400年で一つの区切りをつけるということは、一つのこのまた別の発育をするんじゃないかなと思いますね。そこで、まあ、meanwhile, an, a number of encounters known in the US4 field are with entitled, sorry, entities that can look quite human, so much so that the deep con- connection simply has to exist. The present case is one of that. まあ、あの、The tall white have a physical form similar to ours in all gross. まあ、我々の方、人間とひそっくりだってわけですね、見た感じは。えー、they are upright, えー、ということ書いてありましてですね、normal speech s o u n d ここですね、normal speech sounds, sounds like dog barking. 彼らの発,発声方法はですね、まるで犬が吠える、吠えるかのようであると。あるいは、み、えー、メドメドメドラックがシングと、メドラックがね、歌ってるように、あの、巻き場のな、巻き場の、ごめんなさい、な、なって、巻き場のラークがね、歌ってるのに聞こえると。まあ、しかしながら、トールワイトはキャン、メニックで、まあ、人間と話すときはですね、キャンノーマルカンバーセーションウィズヒューマンと、人間とは普通に話をすることもできると。Some have demonstrated an ability to imitate. まあ、あるも、あるトールワイトはですね、真似をしたと、スペースキューマンズ、特別な人間の真似をしてみせたと。そうです。そんなにも上手だったので、uh, limitation cannot be detected when used over a telephone. 電話で話したときにはね、まるでその、区別がつかないほどだったと。いわゆる物ばねができるわけですね。まあ、た、まあ、普通は普段はそういったその鳥の声だとか、あの、犬のようなく話し方をするんだけども、そうやってる。それから、面白いことも、これ、次が面白いですね。They also can use d e v i c e as project speech so that it is heard by humans within their head. いわゆる人間の頭、頭に、頭にですね、直接その話しかける装置を持っていたと。This works only the, over a short range. 短波の several feet,、uh, several, 何 feet かのね、レンジ、あの、周波数、周波の長さがね、several feet の単周波、短波、短波を使って、requires a human to turn the head sideways to the tall white. そしてまあ、tall white の方を見たときに頭を向けるよう、向ける、向ける必要があったと。そうすると、あの、脳の中にこう、直接音が入ってきたってわけですね。The device is also language translator. そしてその装置というのは同時にね、言語の翻訳機でもあったと。According to its setting from time to time, he was、uh, occasionally able to overhear tall white、uh, conversing among themselves as though they were speaking English. あ、またか、あたかも英語を、英語、英語を話してるかのようにね、と、ホールさん、ホールが、ホール氏が言うにはね、あの、トールと、トールワイトと会話をすることができたと、まあ、というわけで、まあ、同時に翻訳機能も備えてたということを言うわけですね。
で、すっと、アステール、there was a pattern of cover, yeah, 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 yeah,
altogether too much like ourselves for our own comfort. まあ、大変人間によく似てたってことを言ってるんですね。Is that cause to doubt the authenticity of the story? Be aware of the logic. と。まあ、そういうことが書いてあります。で、その次に、origin of the tall white。tall white の、まあ、あの、生まれはどこかってことなんですけども、これはあの、星が書いてありますね。Uh, a ripple of emotion passed through the crowd、uh, when、uh, I mentioned the star,、uh, ここなんですね、star, 星、アクトゥル、アクトゥル、ARCTURU。読むと、えそのまま言いますと、アクトゥルルス、アクトゥルスという星から来ていると。Some 36 light years, of,、uh, light years away。36光年先のね、アクトゥルスという星から来ていると。After a long, after a short pause, でしばらくためらった後、the older lady asked with some surprise,、えー、年配の、ね、女性が驚いて尋ねたと。Teacher, 先生、まあ、トールワイトのことチーターと呼んでたんですね。Does Charlie know where we, are, we come from?Charlie は私たちがどこから来,てる来たのか知ってるのかと。The teacher replied, 先生は答えた。No, not quite, but he is close. いやいや、知らないよ。しかし、近いところにいるよってことを言ったんですけど、ちょっとごめんなさい。前後省略したもんですから、意味はよくわかりませんが。The Art m i d d l h a m may be somewhere else in a recent c o r r e s p o n d e n c まあ、今あの、現在住んでいるのはネリスという空軍,空軍基地ですね。まあ、あの、全く秘密の基地だそうですけども、もうこの、ずっと見,れ見てくださったように地図を示し、そこにはホラーなの入り口があるというのことも書いてあります。えー、で、I never,、uh, ちょっとごめんなさい。飛びました。The ultimate home may be somewhere else. 彼らの究極的な故郷はもっと別のところにあると思うと。あると。In recent correspondence, h o l e state, h o l e は次のように述べていると。I was never, h o l e 氏の言葉としてね。I was never able to determine which stars t o l e white c o l e their home start. で、私は、私はね、あの、できなかったと。determine, どこが、あの、どの星だと、トールホワイトのね、彼らのホームスターと呼んでいる、まあ、故郷の星という、呼んでいる星が、どの星だかということが、結局は私は分かることができなかったと。However, however, my best guess was the star that is roughly 105 light years away. しかし、私の、あの、推測、推測に、推測によれば、105光年離れたところに、まあ、およそね、roughly、105光年離れたところに、まあ、住んでいるんだってことに分かったということで、青字で書いてあります。で、まあ、ずっと書いてある。The data of the establishing the present for Earth's base location is the, あ、ここ面白いですね。えー、地球上で彼らが、ね、最初の基地を作ったことも書いてあります。Hall received mental imaginary, imaginary suggesting that they knew the area prior to the arrival of European American, European American と。ヨーロッパアメリカ人が到着する以前のエリアについて、まあ、あの、私たちに示唆してくれたと。ファーザーもそれ以上に、one of the suggested that,、uh, 人、その中のトールワイトの一人がですね、suggested, 私提案してくれたと。she had、uh, arrived here during the administration of、uh, our president, m a d i s o n m a d i s o n 大統領の時に、ここにアメリカにやってきたということを言ったと。However, the various、uh, bunkers and the interior spaces that Hall observed looked as though they had been built for the tall white by U.S.、Uh, construction firms sometime in the 1950s.1950、まあ、年代にどうのこうのって言ってますが、まあ、重要じゃありません。Hall was led、uh, to believe that、uh, they used the Earth base as a sort of、uh, way station long、uh, legend, le-、uh, legacy. Into still a traveler's route. まあ、地球をですね、中継地に使っているってことが書いてありますね。As though they were the only intermediate station from them. と。As Holt put it, our solar system lies in the middle of the large open space that a tall white must、uh, traverse between their home location and a certain distant destination. と。まあ、地球をですね、あの、自分たちの故郷と、そしてからさらに遠い目的地の中継地に使っていると。But a glance at the table distance is the classic starts from our system. ってことで、まあ、星までの、あちこちの星までの距離が書いてあります。というようなことで、この星座もこのレポートの中に書いてありまして、関係のあるレポートはこの辺りじゃないかっていうのことがここに書いてありますですね。そして興味深いのは先ほど言いましたように、この、なんて言いますか、あの、宇宙船の模型が書いてありまして、あの、いわゆる大円球体ですね。いわゆるスフィアタイプ、あの、ヘミ、スフィアタイプですね。楕円
、対談級の、あの、持ってる。テクノロジーはもう全然もう日本、人間とはもう違ったものでしょうね。もう明らかに、まあ、そういうことですね。えー、それから、ホール、noted a very important limitation of the propulsion system using these ships. と。Its tendency is overheat, threatening the integrity. まあ、その乗り物の様子も書いてあります。どうこうっていうこと。まあ、興味なくては、あの、このページ、最初に紹介したページで、Charles h o r s e and the Tall White という、そのページを、あの、ウェブサイトをね、開いてみてくださると面白いと思いますよ。絵柄地図なども紹介してありますし、その、これなんか面白いですね。サンナー、あの、いわゆるその太陽と地球と、あの、書いてありましてですね。で、どういう時に、あの、どっちの方向に出発していくんだっていう方向が書いてありますね。で、そこの地球と太陽の、まあ、あの、位置が書いてありますけども、サン、エース、ムーン、configuration, configuration、uh, for approach of deep spacecraft. あの、大型のね、あの、宇宙船で、えー、地球に近づく方法っていうのを書いてます。This is rough to dimensional、uh, representation と。これはまあ、大まかな図であると。Sizes and the distances not to scale. スケール、サイズ合わせてないと。それはまあ、太陽が小さく書いてありますからね。Hall observes that、uh, arrivals always occurred at sundown on On full moon days. 満月の、えー、日没の時に彼らは着陸したと。今度は離陸の場合はどうするかというとですね、えー、configuration to for deep spacecraft。まあ、新宇宙というか、まあまあ、大宇宙航行用のね、スペースクラフトはですね、not to scale。これも、これ,これも何かと書いてもあの、スケールは、まあ、あの大きさはねあの、適当だけどもと。あのいわゆる図の,図の太陽、地球の太陽の図は適当だということで意味ですよ。Hall observes that the departures to deep space always occurred at midnight at the time of the new moon. 新月の真夜中にいつもその彼らは出発していったと。まあ、そういうようなことが書いてありまして、その基地もずっとあの写真、いわゆる Google Earth かもわかりませんけども、あの、航空写真、宇宙から見た写真で、えー、図示してあります。というようなことで、あの、トールワイトの説明がずっとしてありますが、まあ、トールワイトのこのレポートを読めばですね、まあ、ある程度正体がわかるといいますか、どういう人たちであったかということがわかるという意味で、大変興味深い資料だと思います。あの、まあ、<笑>そっちくれまして、あの、もう、ここまで情報を開示されてますか、ますからね、皆さん。あの、今更エイリアンがいないだとか、宇宙人が空想物語だとか、UFO は現象であるとかって、まあ、オカルトだとかね、いわゆるスピリチュアル、霊的な現象だとか言って、まあ、否定してる方の方が、まあ、私はおかしいと思いますよね。はっきり言って。ということで、あの、あの、オカルニストと言ってね、私も最近そういうふうに呼ばれてるみたいですけども、肩身を狭くしている人たちは自信を持ってください。あの自信を持ってくださいという言い方おかしいですけどもね、まああの。調べれば調べるほどそういった事実がゾロゾロと出てきますので、えー、皆さんもあの我々がマイナーじゃなくてあの、あまりにも抑え込まれていたということなんですよね。ということで、あの今日はチャールズ・トー・フォーレン・トー・ワイトの,あのレポートをあの一部分で、本当に一部27ページありますからね、紹介させていただきました。続くビデオをご覧くださいますと、トール・ワイトのまた別の謎がお分かりになるんじゃないかと思います。Thank you very much for watching and see you again next time. Bye! まあ、ということで、えー、この部分は終わろうと思ったんですけども、まだ10分ほど、あの、いわゆる映像が残ってましたので、えー、まあ、テクノロジーという部分をもう一度読み直していただいあ、読み直してみたいと思うんですけども、まあ、ここに出てるのは、これが、あの、彼らが言う、えー、スカウト、えっと、ごめんなさいね、えー、スカウトクラフトって、まあ、いわゆる偵察機ですね。で、この大きさがですね、あの、サイズがバス or RV と、バスの、あるいは RV ほどだと、白だと。で、ドアがですね、ラップラウンド。カックピットはですね、ラップラップラウンド。まあ、まあ、飛行機と同じになってるわけですね。あの、one or two rows each side。で、窓がですね、一つか二つそれぞれの側にあると。
、前というようなことですね。で、大きい新宇宙用のといわゆるその大宇宙航行用のは、先ほど言いました大きなサイズであると。で、ミシェル、ミシェルサ,サーラーのごめんなさいね。He whole was also able to catch a, at least a glimpse of a scout ship's、uh, あの彼はあのこのどっかの写真に載ってますけども、何度もこのオーバル、楕円球体のね、あの UFO をその,その近くで空中にホバリングしてるのを見てるんですよね。で、でそれで、まあ、ホールは、uh, able to catch at least a glimpse of a scout ship's、uh, propulsion system と。精神装置,装置をまあ垣間見たことがあると何度もね、何度もじゃなくて、あっちで少なくともね、which appears to be based on fiber optic cores。なんかこう、ファイバー、ファイバーのね、オプティックコイルでできてる。コイルも巻いたようにできてると。with a very large number of winding。大変、たくさんの量がぐるぐる巻いてあったと。まあ、精神装置ですね。From this,、uh, his observation, 彼が見たところによると、of his system, of this system, Hall developed a physical theory that could、uh, describe its、uh, most、uh, operation. まあどのように、まああのまあ、精神装置が働くかということは、推察はでき,できるというかで、まあ、できたというか、そういうことなんですね。The deep、uh, spaceships were capable of、uh, faster than light trouble. ここですね。すごいですね。いいですかあの新宇宙用の宇宙船は、光の速さよりも早くその航行することができると、できたと。And it could, そうですよね。And it could take、uh, the ETs、uh, to their home、uh, star system within two or three months' time. 彼らのね、ホームの星へですね、ET の星へ2、3ヶ月で到達することができると。そうですね。先ほど32光年とかなんとかっていうことを言いましたよね。それを2、3ヶ月っていうわけですから、そうしますと、このアインシュタインの相対性理論っていうのはどうなのかなというふうにまあ思うわけでありますけれども、まあ、それを超えてるわけですね。The scout ship, surprisingly, were assembled here on Earth. 驚くべきことに、この、えー、スカイシップは、ごめんなさい、スカ,スカ,スカウトシップですね。大円球体の小さい方ですね。この日本地球上で組み立てられていると。With a component provided by humans for the ETs. ET のためにですね、人間によって提供されたコンポーネント、部品によってですね、この地球上で組み立てられていると。According to their specification, 彼らのいわゆる使用書によればね、使用書によれば、地球上で、まあ、あの地球人が作った部品を使って作られているということですね。へえ、驚きましたですね、えー。そういうことだそうですよ、皆さん。このレポートによればね、あのー、これを疑う、この人を疑うってことになってきますと、今度はあの、ヘ、ジョン・ポール・ヘア、ホ、ヘリアさんね、あの、カナダの国防大臣の、あの、人の意見を疑うってことになるんですけども、あのー、面白いですね、あの、こういった意見を平気であの否定する人がいますが、あのー、私はそういう人は自分の名前を出してオープンな場所でね、否定なさったらいいんじゃないかと思うんですよ。堂々とカナダの国防大臣に文句を言っていったらいいんじゃないかと思いますよね。Yes, their craft were capable of what appeared to be gravity fleet. えー、なるほど。And、uh, massless operation, operations and could, ごめんなさい、字が小さいもんですからね。Could、um, accelerate to super luminal speeds. They are not as reliable in operation as the aliens would have wished. がしかしですね、と。しかし、これらの乗り物はですね、what appear to be gravity free, 重力、無重力状態、あるいは massless operations, and massless、uh, で,で作動すると。and could accelerate to super luminal speed. それだから、もう高速を超えたスピードで、まあ、あの、まで加速することができると。They are not. で、そしたらそうですよね。光の速さに、あ例えば、1時間でもかけて、1時間でもそうでしょうね。光の速,速さまで加速したら、あの宇宙船の中で人間が潰れてしまいますからね。人間だったら、人間の場合はですね。ですから、無重力よりもそういったものをもう克服していると。They are not reliable to operation as aliens would have wished. Hall noted a very important limitation of the プロパルジンシステム、ユーザーシップス。まあ、あの、ホール氏はその間近でね、そういったその UFO などを目撃してるもんですから、またその、そういったその
限界も知ってるわけですよね。Uh, it's tendency to overheat, overheat the chassis とか、uh, threatening the integrity of its、uh, fiber optic cars と。それからあのコ、コイルを巻いたね、ファイバーコイルを巻いた、uh, 部品でのそのダメージなんかも、ダメージというか、threatening もね、あの分かっていると。The need to minimize the active p r o p a g a n phases of、uh, interplanetary flight,、uh, that is to say, Earth approaches and、uh, flight,、uh, flight of past. Little is known, ほとんど知られてない。Relating to the intellectual operation. Leads the tall white to make maximum use of、uh, ballistic uh, t- um, trajectory, trajectories and the, in turn enable Hall to correctly deduce the time, times of、uh, schedules Earth、uh, arrives and、uh, departures. In the, his hour of、uh, scout craft, Hall noticed two rows of、uh, touch sensitive、uh, buttons just inside the door. Significantly, they bore, they bore、uh, cut, uh, uh, I don't know this word, term, kautoshi like、uh, symbols. Egyptian style experts with more、uh, pictorial element in their nizem than、uh, typical. Uh, car touch, car touches, car touches would have to. Hall notes, h o l notes that,、uh, touch sensitive buttons are just beginning to appear to human made system as of that, at that time. Uh, 少しごめんなさい。あの、英語に翻訳するのは疲れましたので、まあ、今日はこの辺にしておきます。Uh, again, thank you very much for watching and see you again. Please enjoy following video. Thank you very much again. Bye. Hello, this is Hiroshi Hayashi, Hamama City, Japan. When Mr. Hon Paul Heller, the former Minister of Defense Force of Canada,、uh, stated about a man whose name was,、uh, Tall White, it、uh, reminds me of a man in a picture. This is a story about it. In Japanese, Canada no Zen Kogo Daijin ga desu ne, Tall White, no pon hakujin to yu kotoba s kata tokin desu ne, 私はこの絵を思い出しました。この絵の中に描かれているこの人こそそのトール・ワイトではないかなと思,う思ったのであります。超等人間、頭が長くて手が長くて、そしてあの手が、手というか腕が長くてですね、手が非常に小さいですね。で、顔が白いと。まあ、あのそれでまあこの絵にもう一回こう着目してみたわけです。で、今日のビデオはその物語ですけども、あのその前にあの、あいわゆる、ホン・ポール・ヘイリアさんのですね、えー、皆さんに証言を聞いていただき、またその後に、もう一度この絵画の謎についての、ついて迫ってみたいと思います。えー、どうかお楽しみください。Hello, former Prime Minister of Defense Force of Canada, Mr. ホン・ポール・ヘイリア、stated as a Congress that UFOs are as, as real as airplanes flying over the head. This is a very shocking news, and also he said, at least two of them are probably working with US government. I believe other species that I learned about were long ago called tall white.、Uh, this is a story about it. Thank you. To speak to a symposium at the University of Toronto, and、uh, I said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. On Earth at this present time, and、um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government. I, the seventh, the other species that I learned about、uh, not too long ago was called the tall whites. To become spiritual beings and practice the one tenet that the world's major religions have in common, and that is the golden rule.
Hello, this is Hiroshi Hayashi, Hamama City, Japan. This is a sort of a interview program of Hong Po Pei there, the former Prime Minister of Defense and Force in Canada, of Canada. And he said, alien life forms present among us. This is a story about it with my translation. Thank you very much. It's great to have you with us on our show. Why do you say that UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying over our heads? Well, because I know that they are. And they've been, um, as a matter of fact, um, they've been visiting our planet for thousands of years. And one of the cases that would interest you most, if you give me two or three minutes to answer, is uh, during the Cold War, 1961, there were about 50 UFOs in formation flying south from Russia to the, across Europe. And the uh, Supreme Allied Commander was very concerned um, and about ready to press the panic button when they turned around and went back over the North Pole. They decided to do uh, an investigation and they investigated for three years and they decided that um, with absolute certainty that four species, four different species, at least, had been visiting this planet for thousands of years. So that's, uh, we have a long history of UFOs and of course there's been a lot more activity in the last uh, few decades since uh, uh, we invented the atomic bomb and uh, they're very concerned about, uh, about that and the fact that uh, we might use it again and because the whole cosmos is a unity and it affects not just us but other people in the cosmos they're uh, very much afraid that we might be stupid enough to uh, start using atomic weapons again and this would be very bad for us and uh, for them as well. So no serious scientist has ever publicly confirmed evidence of an encounter with extraterrestrials. Why would scientists not confirm the facts if they exist? I'm, I'm afraid they must go out of their way to, not to find because if they did, you know, even 10% of the amount of research I've done in the last eight years, they would be as convinced as I am. I mean, they could do it even faster. Uh, might take them a little longer of a military background, but uh, there are so many wonderful books that tell these, these stories and, uh, and they've been authenticated, the, the sightings have been authenticated by uh, more than one witness and also by radar and they have landed in various places around the world including Russia. Uh, there's a famous case there, I can't remember the, the name of the place, but it was, it was widely reported at the time. A man wrote a book about it and then the French bought the book rights so that it wouldn't be circulated around. Uh, and uh, th there's just so much evidence. Take the time off to do a little bit of uh, research and study. But people just are, you know, some people are interested and will take the time and the others just say, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, just fantasy. Mm -hmm. But I've, since I've been uh, public on this subject, I get, uh, oh, probably three or four emails a week from all over the world from people who have actually witnessed sightings. And some of them who have actually been on the ships and some of them who have actually been transported to another uh, planet. And so this information is not you know, it is, it is top secret in a way that the governments aren't talking about it. But if you listen to the whistleblowers and the people who have worked in the industry and uh, who know what is going on, there is just a lot of information out there and it doesn't take very long to get your hands on it. But see, the problem is that some people who report UFO sightings and alien abductions have been shown to make things up and they, to, to make things up to be famous, to make money, or just for a prank. How do we tell fiction from a fact? Well, you have to you have to spend a lot of time trying to find. Uh, we used to say separating the wheat from the chaff, and uh, takes a lot of effort. Um, when I was minister, I got sighting reports, and. Um, when we, ch we checked them out, about 80%, about 8 out of 10, were, um, were not real. They were sites of Venus or uh, plasma or, you know, a dozen of other things. But there were 15 or 20% for which there was no explanation. And they were the genuine, unidentified flying objects. 
th these things uh, go way back. One of the the uh, conferences I went to was uh, in Las Vegas was uh, promoted by a chap who had written a book about crashes. And there were dozens and dozens and dozens of them, and many of them very, very well authenticated, so that it would be impossible to read all of that evidence and not to uh, come the, to the conclusion that these uh, vehicles were real. Have you ever had your own encounter? Uh, not an encounter with aliens, no. I have seen a UFO about uh, 120 miles north of Toronto over Lake Muskoka where I have a cottage. And two years ago, last uh, uh, Canadian uh, Thanksgiving, which is October, uh, my wife uh, decided she wanted to go out and look at the stars. So uh, I'm not much of a night man, but I put on my cap and went out with her. And she looked into the eastern sky, sky and said, there's a star. And I turned around the other way and I said, oh, there's a much brighter one over here. And she looked and it was. And we, we watched it until our necks almost broke for about 20 minutes. And it was, it was definitely a UFO because it could change position in the sky by three or four degrees in three or four seconds. And I checked out, there were no satellites that could do that. The space station wasn't going by and it doesn't, uh, isn't able to move that fast anyway. And there was nothing, no other explanation except that it was the real thing. And two days later I went down on the dock, <clears throat> got a comfortable chair and watched. It came back almost to the same spot and entertained me for as long as I could take it. And uh, then I went back uh, to the uh, cottage. But it was, it was very interesting because it would drop down in the sky and then it would roar back up and then it would shift across a few degrees and, uh, and do a circle and come back at a speed which, you know, just astronomical speeds. As you know, they travel very, very fast. So does it just look like a falling star that falls really quickly and then rises ac again? What does it look like? Well, it just looked like a star. It just looks like a star. Right. And I don't know if, you, if you're a person who's ever read, read the Bible or not, but I think the, uh, the star of Bethlehem God's uh, flying saucers. Mm -hmm. But you also tell me that people write you emails, three to five emails a week, and they've actually been abducted or they have encounters with, with the aliens. Do they actually tell you what these aliens look like? I mean, you know, everyone's interested. What, what, how would I know if I see an alien and if he abducts me? Well, you have, it first, the, the first question you have to ask is how many species are there? And uh, I used to think there were, you know, between 2 and 12. And uh, Apollo astronaut um, uh, Edgar Mitchell, who came to Toronto uh, a few years ago and had dinner with us, <clears throat> agreed there was somewhere between 2 and 12. But the latest reports that I've been getting from various sources are that there are about 80 different species. And some of them uh, look just like us, and they could walk down the street and you wouldn't uh, know if you ran, you know, walked past one. Um, and they're what we call the Nordic blondes and also the tall whites um, who are actually working with the United States Air Force in Nevada. They, uh, they're able to get away with that. They had a couple of their ladies dressed as nuns went into Las Vegas to shop and they weren't detected. And I have a friend who saw one of the men walking along the street, and he, somebody who would recognize uh, uh, that they were different, and he did. So they're those kind, and then there are the, the short grays, as they're called. And they're the ones that you see in most of the cartoons. They very, have very, very slim arms and legs, and they're very short, just uh, you know, a little over five feet. And they have a great big uh, torso and uh, and a great a great big head and and great big brown eyes, but <clears throat> they're they're different species. So you have to uh, to know that they're different species, and it's uh, and and know that they're all different. Mm -hmm. So so one, um, if you if you saw the short gray if you saw the short grays, you certainly know that there was something up that you'd never seen before. But if you saw one of the Nordic blondes, well, you'd probably say, oh, I wonder if she's from, uh, from Denmark or, uh, or somewhere, you know. 
So these species that you're describing, are, are they all different in terms of nice and mean? Uh, are some of them nice and benevolent, are others nasty, or, 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 or how are they? Are they, are they good to people on Earth, or are they here to harm them? Well, it's a difficult question to answer because they're, they have different agendas. And maybe all of us on Earth have this, should have the same agenda, but you couldn't say maybe that, that Russia and China and the United States all had the same agenda at every, every turn, because they don't. And I would say that nearly all are benign, they're benevolent, they want to help us. There may be one or two species which do not. And uh, that's one of the things I'm investigating at the moment, is to see who they are and what they're up to and uh, what their agendas really are. All right, we're talking to Paul Hellier, former Canadian Minister of Defense, who says extraterrestrial life forms exist and are present on Earth. We'll talk more about what they are and why they're here after a short break. Stay with us. And we're back with Paul Hallier, former Canadian Minister of Defense, to talk about extraterrestrial life forms. Great to have you back. So, these extraterrestrial creatures, where did they come from and how did they get here to Earth? They come from various places. For a long while, um, I only knew about ones who came from different star systems. Um, the Pleiades and uh, Reta Reticula and uh, several other star systems, but in the last few months I have met people who have made me aware of um, that there are some in our star system and that there are actually extraterrestrials um, who live on a, a planet called Andromedia, which is one of the moons of Saturn, and that there are others on, uh, on Venus and some on Mars, and uh, that uh, they may be interacting between themselves. I suspect that they are because there is what of, uh, of these people, and they have rules. For example, one of the rules is that they don't interfere in our affairs unless they're invited to. And uh, that's one of the reasons uh, probably that we haven't seen more of them uh, until very recently. And uh, so But what do you mean? There are a lot of people who want to interact they, with them. There are a lot of people who actually want to see them and know who they are. Uh, what they need a special invitation to inter interact with us? What does it mean? They don't want to interfere into I our think affairs. They have to want to tell us how to run our affairs. They have, have accepted the fact this is our planet and that we have the right to run it, but um, they're very, very concerned. They, th they don't think we're good stewards of our planet. We're not, uh, we're cutting, uh, clear cutting our forests and we're uh, polluting our rivers and our lakes and we're dumping sewage in the oceans and we're doing all sorts of things which are not what good stewards of their homes uh, should be doing. And they don't like that, and they've made it very clear. And as a matter of fact, they have given us a warning. How? And this has come from more than one source. What, how have they um, made it clear? What have they done? They have talked to uh, people. Uh, one of the chaps I talked to about a month ago was, uh, was interacting with them in 1974, he and his brother, in Peru. And uh, they were taken to Andromedia. Uh, teleported, and uh, and they were told uh, what the people there think, and uh, that we're really uh, wrecking our planet, and in fact that something dreadful is going to happen to it if we don't smarten up and change our ways. We spend too much time feed fighting each other, we spend too much money on military expenditures, and not enough on feeding the poor and uh, and looking after the homeless and the sick and uh, that we are uh, polluting our, our waters and our air and that we're playing around with these uh, exotic weapons, uh, thermonuclear weapons and uh, atomic, atomic weapons which have such a devastating effect both on our earth and on other areas in the cosmos and, uh, and they don't like that and that's the reason they would like to work with us to teach us better ways but uh, only I think, with our consent. And they work through individuals and they try and pick out individuals who won't be frightened to death of them.
mm -hmm. because they can give you quite a fright. Uh, one of the cases I'm familiar with was the, the tall whites in Nevada where the United States Airmen working with them uh, you know, were just frightened to death of them. And one, Charles Hall, uh, rescued the daughter of one of the high up uh, people in the, in the tall whites and as a result became very good friends with the mother and, uh, and as soon as they could trust each other they had a wonderful relationship. But, and he wrote a book about it, it's called uh, Millennial Hospitality. Mm -hmm. Millennial Hospitality. And uh, it's, it tells you how you go through these stages of being scared out of your wits, but then as, when you establish a trust and a working relationship, why you can have the same relationship, uh, same kind of relationship that you would have with someone here on Earth. But here's what I'm thinking. If you're outing their presence, which is clearly not what they want since they're hiding, why aren't they? Why, you know, why aren't they so afraid of? Why aren't you afraid of repercussions? Because you're obviously stating that they're here among us, well, and you're I'm telling me all these species that exist. That they are here among us, and I'm not afraid because, in most cases, uh, well, as far as uh, technology is concerned, they're light years ahead of us, and we have learned a lot of things from them. A lot of the things that we use today, we got from them. Uh, you know, uh, uh, lead lights and uh, microchips and uh, Kevlar uh, vests and uh, all sorts of things that we got from their technology and we could get a lot more too, especially in the fields of medicine and agriculture if we would, uh, if we would go about it peacefully. But um, I think maybe some of our people are, are more interested in getting their their military technology and I think that's that's wrong I think that's wrong-headed and that's one of the things that uh, that we're gonna have to change because we're gonna have to work together talking about uh, all of us everywhere on the planet you have mentioned military technology and swapping technologies and barters between inter in, in between aliens and uh, people in American government I want to ask you as a former Minister of Defense of Canada is interstellar war a possibility? Should we be creating a Star Wars force to defend ourselves from possible invasion or something like that? Well, I think it's a possibility, but it's a possibility especially if we, uh, if we shoot down every uh, UFO that comes in our, in our airspace without asking who they are or what, they're, what they want. And right from the beginning we started scrambling planes and trying to shoot them down but their technology was superior enough that we weren't able to uh, get away with it, uh, certainly not uh, for a long while, and during that period of time they could have taken us over without any trouble if they'd wanted to. So uh, I, th I think we have to, uh, rather than develop our own Star Wars, for Earth Star Wars, to, uh, to protect ourselves against them, that we should, we should uh, work with the benign uh, species who are the vast majority and uh, and work together and rely largely on them of course and cooperate so that the, we would be uh, contributing something at the same time but uh, I don't think there's any any point in us uh, developing a, a galactic uh, force that um, would tempt us to go out on our own and get into mischief which is one of the things I think some of them are concerned about but what do you expect to happen if people start to believe in alien existence? Because things are definitely going to change. Our lives aren't going to be the same anymore. Well, I hope that's the case. I, I hope that's the case. And I'm, I'm all for full disclosure. And I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to push very hard for a full disclosure in the book I'm writing. And to give some reasons for it. Uh, things that we really have to know and uh, have a right to know and that our future as a species and here I mean you know all of the species on the world in the world um, are potentially at risk if we don't figure out what's going on and work together to uh, to try and make life more uh, amenable for all of us but it's and, uh, to work with our neighbors from other planets as well but still, like, I'm thinking to myself, if they've been here for such a long time, as you say, um, and they're interested in helping humanity, as you say, why is our world 
such a mess. I mean, if you want to help someone, you just help someone. You don't That's wait great. that someone to invite you to help that someone, no? <laughs> well, I don't, you know, it's something that you, I think parents can sometimes uh, say to their children, um, this is what you should do. But that doesn't mean the children are going to do it, does it? Because the, the, the cosmos is based on free choice. And we can, we're, we're given the option of making mistakes, of making wrong choices. And I guess what bothers some of us is we've made too many wrong choices and not enough right choices. So we're going to have to start switching our priorities and stop uh, spending so much time and effort in weapons to kill each other or to dominate each other and spending a lot more time on how to help each other to have a better society and a life which is healthier and where the health care is better and, and where the food distribution is better and, uh, and where the air is cleaner and the water is cleaner and all of those things that are waiting to be done if we just uh, get together and, uh, and ro row, as we say, a rowboat, row in the right direction, the same direction. And it's possible, but uh, it's a tall order and so far we haven't done it. My thesis will be that we have to do it and we have to start doing it right away. Thank you so much for this interesting interview and insight on extraterrestrial life. That was Paul Halier, former Canadian Minister of Defense. He says aliens exist and live among us on Earth. That's all the time we have for today. I will see you in the next edition of Sophie and Co. Hello. Former Prime Minister of the Defense Force of Canada, Mr. Hong Paul Hiller, stated at the Congress that UFOs are as, as real as airplanes flying over the head. This is a very shocking news, and also he said, at least two of them are probably working with U.S. government. I believe other species that I learned about were long ago called tall white. This is a story about it. Thank you. to speak to a symposium at the University of Toronto and uh, I said UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead on earth at this present time and um, at least two of them probably working with the United States government I the seventh the other species that I learned about uh, not too long ago was called the tall whites. To become spiritual beings and practice the one tenet that the world's major religions have in common, and that is the golden rule.